Stots in the middle and then goes out. Stots in the middle and then goes out. Stots in the middle and then goes out. That's the explosive pattern. Oh, 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 I see it, I see it. Oh, Valerie, I'm so glad you're showing this to the children. And, and of course, this one had the radio pattern too. Then, of course, I was looking and it, here too. Oh, I looked up from the top, I was giving it a drink. And there in my sweet little cactus plant, the explosive pattern again. Well, hello there, children. I didn't hear you come in. Oh, I'm just... It, these patterns are everywhere. I came into the art studio and I looked around and I saw it in the plant. And of course, we saw it last time in the flower. Do you see? Do you see it? Can you see the radial explosive pattern? Amazing, isn't it? Oh. Science, math, they're so much fun. I don't understand why people aren't more excited about the sciences. <laughs> so, I'm so glad you're here again today. Um, if you've forgotten, my name is Aunt Shirley and I am a nuclear physicist and a rocket scientist. I do know about robots though, and I do know about planets. And some have said that I know even something about alien spacecraft, but we won't go there. <laughs> Settle down, Shirley. All right, so just to review, the last week we started looking at nature's growth patterns, the way things grow, and we saw Right, explosive pattern starts in the middle and then goes out in all the directions. Now, this one, interesting, isn't it? They did one where the explosive pattern started in the middle. Then this one, Valerie gave them interesting pieces of paper and made them cut the explosive pattern off, like taking a piece of salami out of the bunch. So silly. And then this one, she had them do several. And I see one way off there. There's another one coming into the picture. Explosive pattern. And then they did the radio pattern. These two were circular, but she said, you know, they could be any shapes and they can change shapes as well. And, and they do. Um, well, look here. Th these are cells. These are inside our bodies. It's an incredible, fascinating journey. And this radial pattern has circle, circle. This one has circle, a triangle, and some very organic shapes. I actually think there are many little circles or spheres stuck together. And this one has the circle and the triangle. Triangle, triangles, amazing. Oh, and there's the sonar I was telling you about. And then of course we did the spiral. Spiral in, spiral out. Yes, indeed. Now, today, boys and girls, these new patterns, these patterns do not start in the middle. Now, don't get nervous, all right? These two are also patterns, so they repeat themselves. Now, you've already seen these patterns. You just may not have known what to call them. You will today. Oh, oh. I've seen this pattern in the sand. The wind makes it happen. I've seen it happen on the beach. The water makes it happen. The rhythm of the waves makes it happen. I've seen this pattern in branches of trees. I've seen pictures from our telescopes this, my friend, do you know which planet that is? Come on, come on, do you know? Really? You're right, it is Jupiter. And it has all the meander, and the, here's a radial spiral pattern. What do you know? 
Now, this pattern happens by the wind, the way the water moves, the way the planet moves, gravity, even out there in space, you know, the way that objects grow. And what I do know is that the, this, oh, did I tell you the name? Surely you're slipping. This is the meander, like me and er, meander, meander, meander. The snakes meander, the fish meander. Oh, but look at the difference now. A fish meanders left to right, but, but the mammals do not go left to right. The mammals go up and down. And that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? If you think about it, they need to use all of their muscles to push all of their weight out of the water and then come back in. Why? To breathe. Yep. The mammals in the water, they have a challenge, that is for sure. But their nose is on top of their head, and so it makes perfect sense for them to go up and down, meander. Now, there's a story I heard once. I have many friends from around the world, and I've learned some very, very interesting lessons from listening to their stories. Here's a, one story. It was from a, a Native American friend of mine. He's an elder. He's very old now. But the story goes like this. There was a river that had a job to do. And its job was to go from the middle of the, of the land to the ocean. That was its job. So it went on its way. And being an intelligent river, it went for the path of least resistance. That means you take the best way, the easiest way. That's the best to do it. Path of least resistance. So, as the river was meandering its way towards the ocean, it would find sand, so it would go that way. And then when it saw, saw a rock or something in its way, it would go the other way. And then it meandered its course, and all of a sudden, boom, it came across a huge, mighty mountain. And the river banged up to the mountain, and it said, Mighty mountain, please, please move out of my way. I must get to the ocean. And do you know what the mighty mountain said? Stubborn, mighty mountain, I might add. It said, I will not move. I am here. I am mighty. I am the mountain, and I will not move. And the river did not know what to do, because she kept crashing up against the mountain. But eventually she noticed that there was a little bit of place where the rocks and the bottom of the mountain had started crumbling. And so she went that way. And what she found is that she went meander to the left and meander to the right. Sometimes she meandered under or over the obstacles, the rocks and the things that got in her way. And before long, guess what? The river was on the other side of the mountain. And she looked up at that big, tough, stubborn mountain. And she felt sorry for him. Because the mountain couldn't see what was ahead for the river. So the little river took a couple little pieces of the mountain with her, just as a favor, and she continued on her way. They say that that little river, oh, it has a name, yes. It created the Grand Canyon, 
The Colorado River, my dears, is exactly what my dear friend was talking about. That there was a day many, many years ago when the mighty Colorado River, what caused the Grand Canyon, well, with the wind too, but never mind that right now. It started a very teeny tiny river. Amazing. So, the snakes meander, the wind meanders, the water meanders, the edges of the clouds meander. It is an incredible pattern. Oh, there's a song that goes with it. <laughs> Something about wiggle waggle woo. I'm not going to do that. No, thank you. I'll leave that for Miss Valerie and all her crazy imaginary friends. <laughs> Dear me. All right. And here's our second pattern we're learning today. This one also does not start in the middle. You might even have already guessed it if you looked here. What do you see? A tree, right? But what part of the tree? You've got it, you guessed it. The branching pattern. Yes, indeed. And it's so many places. Whenever nature wants to take something from one place to many places, branching pattern. It uses it when it uses the lightning and it needs the lightning's energy to move. Branching pattern. Here's the river. Remember the meander I was talking about? Well, it also has the branching pattern. When it finds places to go, it meanders out and then they split and it makes the branching pattern. I'm loving this. This was from so long ago that we can't even perceive how long ago this was from. But anyway, this artist was able to draw a picture of a dinosaur inside the egg. And here is the placenta, which carries the nutrients. And it does it just like in our veining systems. Now, I don't want to tell you how many blue branching patterns I have on my legs. It happens, girls, just you wait. But for right now, if you look on the top of your hands, maybe on your wrists, you can see your branching pattern. That's right, you got it. The veining system is a branching pattern. Amazing. So it carries life's blood because it has the water and the food that the you know where our food is right from the food we eat the energy but there's also from our breathing there's a food of sorts right oxygen so important and the branching pattern carries the the nutrients and the oxygen to everywhere right down to our little baby Pinky Joe. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Now, we talked about the branching pattern, and here are some children's artwork that use the branching pattern. Now, there's a story, I'm sorry, a song that goes with this one too. I'm not feeling up to singing, but I will tell you, starts as one, then goes two. That's the branching pattern. Why? Yes, it is a why. Why? Well, because it is. <laughs> starts as one, then goes two, and then it repeats itself. Starts as one, then goes two. Starts as one, then goes two. Starts as one, then goes two, starts as one, then goes two. That's the branching pattern, boys and girls. Isn't it incredible? And then, because my dear, dear Valerie is an artist, 
she said to make sure you notice that when the lines go to the edge of the paper or they cross over each other, they will make... <laughs> You're so smart. That's right, shapes. This one has geometric shapes because the lines are straight. But if the lines were meandery, then the shapes wouldn't be geometric. The shapes would be what we call organic, which means they would be unusual shapes, like cauliflower or, or broccoli. They have meanderies. I better say, well, they do have the branching pattern too. Have you ever cut open broccoli? It looks like a tree. <laughs> so exciting. So, boys and girls, that's where we are today. We have the meander pattern. It goes up and down like the mammal's location. Locomotion. To get to their location. <laughs> oh, locomotion. Up and down for the fish. For the serpents, any other animal that doesn't have legs to move itself, it propels itself left to right, meandering through the grass, through the sand, inside crevices, inside the earth. Yeah, the meander pattern is very useful. And the rivers use it. It's used up in space, I showed you, Jupiter. And then the branching pattern. Remember, it starts as one, then goes two. Oh, I don't know how to do it. There we go. Starts as one, then goes two. Why? Because it makes a Y. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> oh, Shirley, please stop. So there you are. Five of the nine nature patterns, congratulations. Explosive, radial, not radio. The radio uses the radial. Echo, echo out. Spiral, starts in the middle, walks around itself. Ooh. <laughs> Meander, meander, wiggle waggle, and then branching. Starts as one, then goes two. Why? Well, why not? <laughs> oh, dear me. Who knew science and art could be so much fun? Oh, I'm going to have to go back and tell all those stuffy old dusty, musty friends of mine to come to Miss Valerie's art studio. I think they'd be fascinated to see the type of artwork you're creating at your little people ages. I'm very proud of you. Now, remember, when doing science and art, there is no doing wrong, okay? There's right and then there's left. There's no right and wrong. Unless, of course, you're not being respectful, then that's wrong. But for the most part, in Miss Valerie's room, some people say yes or no. But in Miss Valerie's room, it's yes and no. See the difference? Miss Valerie's on to something, I do believe. Well, boys and girls, it's been a pleasure introducing you to the five nature patterns that we'll be doing now. Once we get to space camp, we're going to be building our rockets and other objects, and we'll be doing the three-dimensional nature patterns. <laughs>